Hello and welcome to the Linux command line video series. In this video, we will cover the concepts of users and groups. The Unix operating system was designed from day one to be a multi-user operating system, such that more than one user can use the system at the same time. Each user has access to files that only they are given permission to access. There are a couple of system information files that store information about the accounts on the system and the different groups that are defined on the system. The slash etsy slash password file contains a list of all of the user accounts on the system. The slash etsy slash group file contains a list of all of the groups defined on the system. Typical usage of groups would be to separate by job function. So for example, you have the accounting group, you have a sales group, you have an engineering group, etc. Let's take a look at the Etsy password file. I'm going to use the head command and only view the first five lines. So head dash n5 of slash Etsy slash password. The Etsy password file is a text file that uses the colon character as a field separator. So let's take a look at each line and take a look at the fields. The first field is the username, separated by the colon. Then the second field is the password of the account. In the early days, the hashed password was actually listed here in clear text. For obvious reasons, it has since been removed and replaced with just an X. And then another colon for the delimiter. Next in the third field is the user ID. In the fourth field is the group ID. In the fifth field is the user's full name. And the sixth field is the location of the user's home folder. The seventh and last field is the default shell executed by the user when they log in. Let's take a look at the accounts we already have currently. So I'm going to do a tail dash n of that same file, the Etsy password file. And we see here the last two entries is the account for imaging monkey and Linux student. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a user. To create a new user account, we can use the user add command. In this example, we will add a new user with the name of Aaron. Okay, so we're going to add a user account. So we're going to use the sudo, and then user add, comment, Aaron Burr. We're going to do a make of the home folder, and we're going to specify the shell to be the bash shell. And lastly, we want the account name to be Aaron. Let's go ahead and verify what we did by looking at the same file again. And sure enough, we have Imaging Monkey Linux student, and then it added the Aaron Burr account, right? The account name is Aaron. The password is removed. The user ID is 1001, which is just the increment of the last one available. The group ID by default is the same thing as the user. The full name is Aaron Burr. The home folder in slash home is called slash home Aaron. And then the bash shell is going to be the shell that's executed when Aaron logs in. So let's take a look at another way to see what the user and group ID is for the user. You can just use the ID command. So just by typing ID by itself, it will give you the user ID, in this case 1000, and the group ID, which is this case again is 1000. And then lastly, it tells you what groups that this user is in. So when you don't specify an account after ID, it will give you the currently logged in user. And if you specify the account, it will tell you user ID for that account, group ID for that account, and what groups that person belongs to. And let's complete the new user process by giving the new user a password. So we're going to do sudo password Aaron. It's going to ask you for a new password. I'm going to type in my new password. Type it again. And then it's going to give you a success. So now the user Aaron can log in with that password. 
Much like the Etsy password file, which lists out the system's user, the Etsy group file contains a list of all of the groups defined on the system. So let's go ahead and take a look at it by doing head n5 of slash Etsy group. So we're going to take a look at the first five groups on the system. So once again, each group is uh, separated by a line, and then within the line, it has a colon as a delimiter. The first field is the name of the group, and then the second field is the password. The third field is the group ID, and then the fourth field is going to be any users that belong to the group. So in this case, ADM is the name of the group. Uh, that's a password. The group ID is four, and these two users, syslog and Kane, both belong to this ADM group. So let's take a look at the end of this file just to see what we get. And here we see that iMonkey account, the group is 999, student is 1000, and Aaron is 1001. To add a user to more groups, you can use the user mod command. So in this example, let's go ahead and add Aaron to other groups like Demon and ADM. So we're going to say user mod, and actually, let's go ahead and do sudo user mod. We're going to do dash A to append to a group, and which groups do we want to append to? We're going to attend to the Demon group, the ADM group, and then we want to add the user Aaron. So now let's take a look at the group file again. We just need to take a look at the first five lines. And now you can see with the daemon group, sure enough, Aaron, the user, is added to it. And same thing with the ADM group. The user Aaron has now been added to those groups. So once again, we can do the ID of Aaron. Now we see that he belongs to three different groups belongs to his own group, the Aaron group. He belongs to the Demon group, which is group ID 1. And he also belongs to ADM, which is group ID 4. Another way to look at the groups is using the groups command. So you can specify groups and then the user you're interested in, so Aaron. And similar output, right? It tells you that Aaron belongs to the Aaron group, the Demon group, and the ADM group. Now let's take a look at how to log in as another user. The SU command, which stands for substitute user, allows the command line to be switched to another user. First, let's take a look at who we are now with the who am I command. This will show you the name of the current user. So we see that we are logged in as the account named student. Now let's take a look at where we are with the pwd command. We see that we are in the student account's home folder, which is slash home slash student. Both of these can actually be verified with a prompt, right? which contains the name of the account and the location. But not all systems have the prompt set up this way, so don't rely on it being there all the time. Let's change user to the user Aaron. We're going to use the su command, so su space Aaron. The system is going to prompt you for the password, so go ahead and type in your password. Now let's take a look at who we changed into with the who am I command again. And sure enough, we are now Aaron. And let's take a look at where we are. We are still in the folder we were before, which is slash home slash student. Notice that the prompt actually says slash home slash student instead of the tilde because tilde stands for the user's home folder. And since we are now Aaron, this is no longer a home folder, so the tilde does not apply. Okay, now that we have successfully logged in as another user, we're going to go back to our original user by typing exit. All right, so as you can see, we're back to the student user, and we're back to that same folder, which is slash home slash students. So that's how you log in as another user from the command line.
An option to SU is the dash option. The way to use it is to say SU space dash space and then the username. The difference with using the dash is that the new shell started will inherit any environments that the new user has as if they actually logged in. So for example, some of the environments would be the initial folder that the shell would be starting from, the type of shell itself, any aliases, path, set, and so forth. Let's take a look at who we are right now. So we're gonna go back to who am I? We see that we're a student. And where we are, we are in slash home slash student. Let's change user to the Aaron account again, but this time we are going to use a dash option. Right, so this is gonna initiate a shell login. Once we type in the right password, you can see that the prompt has been updated. Now we know we're the Aaron account and we know we're now in Aaron's home folder. Let's go and verify by doing who am I and APWD. The difference that we see in this example is that we're now in Aaron's home folder, right? Which is the account that we logged into. So when you do the dash option, there are other environment variables that get set. Now that we're done, let's get back to our original user by typing exit. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video where we learned about the concepts of user accounts and groups. We looked at the command user add, user mod, ID, password, groups, who am I, SU, and a more in-depth look at the LS command. Hope you enjoyed it, and if so, click on the thumbs up icon to like this video. Please hit the subscribe button to get notified when the next video comes out. Also, please leave me messages in the comment section below so I know what you liked and didn't like or what you may want to see in future videos. See you next time.